In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a responsive profile card using only HTML and CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up the Figma file for my project. I have the desktop, tablet, and mobile layout. I'm going to create a responsive profile card. So if we actually zoom into the design, we can see all the elements that we will add to our project. I have this background image. I have a circle profile image on top of it, followed by the name of the person, and then a brief description. Beneath that, I have a call to action to follow this person's profile. Just looking at this design, I know I can make certain assumptions about how I'm going to develop it. I have this image in the background, and because I have this circle profile on top of this background, I know I'm going to want to set a certain position property for this background element, so that way this element can definitely be on top of it. For the desktop view, I know I want the cards to fill up the page. For the tablet view, I'm going to want to reduce how many cards are visible at a time, and then for the mobile view, I want everything to be in one column. So now based on this design, we can jump into CodePen and start coding it. So initially in CodePen, I only have the link to the font family that I'm going to use for this project. I'm going to start by putting code into the body. So initially I'm going to want to create a container that will create the grid shape and then determine how things are going to be laid out on the page. You can use Flexbox for this, but I'm going to use grid. So first I'm going to set a div with a class of wrapper grid. And this is basically the overarching container that will hold all of the elements. And then I'm going to make the code for each individual container. So back in CodePen, I'm going to write div and I'm going to set the class of this to container. Then for each container, we're going to define all of the elements in the HTML. So for each container, we're going to have some background image a circle profile image on top of it, an H1 for the name, a paragraph tag for the body, and then a call to action that's a button. So I'm going to lay out all these elements in the HTML. So initially we're going to have this banner image, so I'm going to jump back into my code pen. I'm going to write div class banner image. So this will actually be this background image. Then the next thing I'm going to add is the actual profile image, which will be a circle. So then beneath that, I'm going to add an image with the alt text of profile image. And I'm also going to set the class of this to profile image. First, I'm just going to lay the structure out and then I'll go back and input the actual content. Then it's going to be the actual name. So I'm going to go back in here, add an H1 tag. For the H1, I'm going to add a class of name. Then beneath that, I'm going to add a description about the person. So that will be a paragraph tag with a class of description. And then the last element in the card is this follow button. So this is an actual button with a class of I'll just write button. So that's all the basic HTML to create this profile card. And now I'm going to go back and actually place content inside of it. So first I'm going to add this actual profile image. And then we can actually see that image right here. Then I'm going to add the name of the person in the H1 tag, and I'm going to copy that description and place it in the description tag. And then I'm just going to write the word follow in the button. So there you go. That's all of the HTML work and everything else will be completed within CSS. So in the CSS, first I'm going to declare certain variables in the root because I'm going to reuse them throughout the project. Next, I'm going to add certain properties to everything. So I'm just going to write box sizing border box. I'm going to set the font family to the one that I placed in the header. And then I'm just going to set the margin and padding to everything as zero. And for this body tag, I just want to ensure that the color of everything references a variable that I declared earlier. I'm just going to write color and set it to the gray variable. 
Next, I'm going to start to work on the grid that will lay out all the content. So initially, I'm going to work on this wrapper grid. So I'm going to take this container and duplicate it several times. So each one of these containers represents a profile card. So I have three profile cards on the page right now. So then I'm going to reference that wrapper grid. First, I'm going to write display grid. And then I'm going to write grid template columns and set it to one FR. So initially I'm going to create the mobile view, which will be this one column. And then I will make it responsive for a tablet and for desktop. Then I'm going to want this element to be aligned in the center of the page. So I'm going to write justify content and place it in the center. And then I'm also going to want to add some space between each card. Right now the cards are flushed up right next to one another. So I'm going to write grid gap and set that to two REM. Now there's a little breathing room between each card. Next, I'm going to define the CSS for the actual container. So I'm referencing that class of container. And initially I just wanted to define the outside of it a little bit more. So I'm going to write box shadow and then define a shadow around it. And I'm going to set that to a gray color. Now we can actually see the bounding area of the container. Now, because we set the margin and padding to zero, it's flushed on the left and right sides of the page. Next, I'm going to add text align center. So all the text goes in the center of the container. So then I wanted to add a little bit of a curve to a design so it's not a harsh corner. So I'm going to write border radius and set that to one REM. And then I'm going to set the position of the container to relative. And that's because, as I said before, I want certain elements in here to have a different position property, but be relative to the container that it's in. So I'm going to set this bounding area as a position of relative. So that way when I manipulate this background image, it's in relation to the container. So the next thing I'm going to do is add this banner image. And there are multiple ways that you can do this. The way that I'm going to do it is add a background image through the CSS. So I'm referencing that class of banner image. And like I said before, this needs to have a different position than the actual profile image and the text. So in here, I'm going to write position and set that to absolute. Next, I'm going to actually add this background image. So I'm writing the tag of background image and setting that to a URL. Next, I need to set a specific height and width for this image. So I'm going to set the height of this image to 10 REM and I'm going to set the width to 100%. So now we can actually see the image on the screen, but obviously it doesn't look that good yet. I'm going to set the background position to center. I'm going to set the background repeat to no repeat. So that way it doesn't duplicate the image to fill up the space. And I'm going to set the background size to cover. So now this is looking much better. It's actually filling up the card and it's not repeating. Next, I'm going to work on this profile image. In the design, I have this as a circle that is placed on top of that background image. So in my CSS, I'm referencing this image with the class of profile image. And in here, I'm going to set the width to 8REM. So that reduces the size of it. As you can see right now, it's actually beneath that background image. In order to make it a circle, I'm going to make it a clip path circle with 60 pixels at the center. So now we can actually see that it was cropped into a circle on the page. And right now it's too close to the top of the container. So I'm going to write margin top 4.5 REM. So now that pushes it down quite a bit and it looks like that circle is exactly split in half by that background image, which is where I want it to be placed. We just have to do a bit more CSS for the text and the button. So the next thing I'm going to do is modify that class of name. I want to reduce the font size a little bit, so I'm going to make it 1.5 REM. Then I'm going to work on the description. So I'm going to set the margin top and bottom to one REM and the left and right to two REM. That way the description has a little bit of breathing room. 
and I want to reduce the font size of this a little bit, so I'm going to make it 0.9 REM. Next, I'm going to work on that button. So again, right here, I have this button with a class of button, so I'm going to reference that in the CSS. I'm going to set the width of this to 100% so it fills up that parent element. I'm going to remove the border of it. I'm going to set the font size to 1 REM. I'm going to set the font weight to bold. I'm going to set the color of this to white. And then the background color will be one of the variables that I declared earlier. And it obviously needs some padding because it's too close to the sides. So I'm going to set the padding of this to 1 REM. This is looking really good so far. We just have to do a little bit of cleanup and fix the alignment. So initially in this container, I set that border radius to 1 REM because I wanted there to be a little bit of curve. But right now the image and the button are kind of ignoring that underlying curve. So I have to set that overflow to hidden so then we can actually see that curve radius. And right now the card is completely flush to the left and right side of the screen. So I want to add a little bit of a margin between the card and the sides of the screen. So in that wrapper grid, I'm going to set the margin to 2 REM. So now we have some margin around the card. This is looking really good so far. So now we just have to work on the actual responsiveness of it. So as I shrink, the cards go down to a really small size. And as I increase it, it can get very wide. So we are going to want to fix this in our design. So I'm going to want to control the size of the card a little bit more. So that way I know it's going to look good from a desktop view to a mobile view. So for this grid template columns, initially I just set it to 1FR. That's why it grows and shrinks depending on the size of the screen. But I'm going to want to control that a little bit more. So in here, I'm going to write min max 300 pixels and then 1FR. So this is basically saying that I'm going to set a minimum value and a maximum value. So the minimum value I want this card to be for the mobile view is 300 pixels. So as you can see, as I decrease the size now, now it doesn't shrink to below 300. I can increase it and it can still get really wide, but it won't be smaller than the 300. So now that we created this mobile view, I'm going to update the design so it works for tablet and desktop as well. So again, referencing the design file, I created the mobile view already, and now I'm going to create the tablet view and the desktop view. So when it hits a particular size, I want two cards to be visible in each row, and when it exceeds another size, I want three cards to be visible in each row. So beneath all this styling work, I'm going to add some media queries in order to do this. So first I'm going to write at media, screen and, for this, I'm going to set the minimum width to 500 pixels. And what do I want to manipulate at this size? Well, I want to change that wrapper grid because that grid holds all of the elements. So in this example, I have it set to one column. Here, I want to set it to two columns. And here, I want to set it to three columns. So I'm going to manipulate the wrapper grid in order to achieve this look. Now, if you're new to grid, I have a whole crash course video that goes over all of the basics. I'll link that video in the description below. So I'm going to reference that class of wrapper grid, which basically held all the elements. And again, for that mobile view, I set the grid template columns to that min max of 301 FR. And it's only one column because there's only one entry right here. So for this tablet view, I'm going to set it to two columns. So I'm going to write grid template columns and I'm going to set the value of this to repeat to one FR. This is basically saying create two columns and they'll each be one FR. So when I expand this, now it goes into two columns when it reaches that certain breakpoint. We're going to do a very similar thing for the desktop view. At media, screen, and I'm going to set the min width to a different value. And for here, again, I'm going to reference that wrapper grid, but I want to change the number of columns to three. So I'm going to write grid template columns, set it to repeat, and I'm going to have three columns here and they'll each be one FR. 
So when I reach that other value, three columns are visible. So now we have a responsive layout. So there you go. That's how I created a profile card using only HTML and CSS. Please let me know if you have any questions about the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.